Greetings! The focus of this tutorial will be to look at the differences between woven and lamellar bone and to discuss a little bit more what lamellar bone is. In addition, we will very explicitly investigate the anatomy of an osteon, which is the type of lamellar bone located in compact bone. Let's get started. This discussion begins with a brief conversation about bone histology and the types of bone that can be created by osteoblasts and osteoclasts. The first type of bone we're going to talk about is a special type of bone called woven bone. Woven bone is present in fetal development. We also see woven bone created during fracture repair. This is a rudimentary form of bone that allows for hydroxyapatite and collagen to be created in the bony matrix. However, it is not as structurally sound as lamellar bone. Lamellar bone is the mature bone tissue laid down in thin sheets called lamellae. Those are circular orientations of sheets laying down lamellar bone. So lamellar bone is going to be the primary bone type that we find in adults as well as older children. But during fetal development, from intramembranous ossification and endochondral ossification, where we're starting with tissues that are not bone and then creating bone in those tissues, that's when we're going to create the woven bone. So intramembranous ossification begins, perhaps you remember, with mesenchyme and the mesenchyme becomes ossified, initially with woven bone and then remodeled into lamellar bone. For endochondral ossification, initially it is cartilage model, which is then ossified as endochondral ossification processes commence. The initial bone put down is woven bone, and then that woven bone is remodeled into lamellar bone. Now both cancellous and compact bone we have visited about in lab and in our histology chapter. The cancellous bone is made of gross anatomy called spicules and trabeculae. The spicules are round little spikes and the trabeculae are flatter areas of cancellous bone. These types of structures, these gross anatomical features, are made up at the histological or cellular layer of lamellae. However, because of the great surface area to volume ratio found in cancellous bone, and considering that bone marrow is wrapped around the cancellous bone, the need for a central canal is null. There is such rich blood supply, such great surface area, and such a decrease in density of the spicules and trabeculae, the diffusion of nutrients and wastes can take place between the bone marrow and the osteocytes. So although the osteocytes are laying bone down concentrically around them in cancellous bone, there is no central canal. However, with compact bone, we're looking at a very dense bone tissue, something that has a relatively small surface area relative to the volume of bone on the inside. Therefore, as the osteocytes lay down lamellae in compact bone, a central canal becomes essential in making sure that we can get nutrients and wastes to move through the spaces between the osteocytes and the central canal. We're going to look at a brief animation here on an osteon as, a, as we look at a lamellae with central canals. To begin with, I've created a brief cartoon. And each one of these central circular orientation of cells and structures is known as an osteon. Osteons were once referred to as a haversion system. This is an eponym, and we will still run into individuals who refer to it as the haversion system and the very central piece as the haversion canal. However, you will find that I primarily refer to it as an osteon, osteo being bone. If we're looking at the anatomy of an osteon, we'll notice that they tend to form um, circular clusters and we'll get multiple osteons bordering each other as you saw in this slide. So multiple osteons are squished together. 
inside the osteon, the very central piece of anatomy is referred to as the central canal. Recall, as I just said, it may also be known as the haversion system. In the central canal, there is an artery as well as a vein. The artery is going to bring nutrient-rich blood to this tissue, and the vein will take away the wastes. The movement between the central canal and the surrounding tissue is going to occur along concentration gradients, driving movement of nutrients from the red artery into the matrix of the bone, and wastes moving from the matrix of the bone into the blue vein illustrated here. We also have neurons or nerve cells running through this area. However, it's beyond the scope of this current animation. Another anatomical feature you will note about an osteon is the presence of concentric lamellae, rings of lamellae, and these are produced by osteocytes. This is the way that the matrix is being laid down in this particular type of connective tissue. The way that the hydroxyapatite and the collagen fibers are being excreted extracellularly into the matrix of this connective tissue. What that means is that we actually have spaces in this area, which is the location that a cell sits in. A lacunae, or a lacunae is the hole or cavity in which a cell sits. We will see the use lacunae with cartilage. Chondrocytes sit in lacunae, but we also see the word lacunae used with osteocytes. Osteocytes sitting in a cavity, the cavity being the lacunae. I oftentimes think of this space as the house in which a cell is sitting, and the cell is the living structure that occupies that space. The cells that we are talking about in an osteon are osteocytes. Osteocytes are mature cells that are 100% surrounded by bony matrix. They've walled themselves off. Because they've walled themselves off and they are producing a connective tissue that is structurally sound, laden with numerous collagen proteins as well as ample hydroxyapatite, the mineralization of the bone, these cells would soon die if they had cut themselves off from their blood supply. So an additional structure exists in the osteon known as a canaliculi. The canaliculi are aqueducts or little canals that run between the matrix and open up an area for water, nutrients, and wastes to diffuse between the osteocytes in their lacuna and the central canal where the blood vessels are situated. Therefore, we have three compartments here. Diffusion must occur outside of the blood vessels into the extracellular matrix, through the extracellular matrix to the osteocyte, and it is gradients here that drive the movement of nutrients from the central canal towards the osteocytes, and it is again a concentration gradient that is moving waste products from the osteocytes through the canaliculi to the central canal and into the blood vessel. This completes the tutorial describing the differences between woven bone and lamellar bone and then looking specifically at the lamellar bone organization of an osteon or a haversion system which is the anatomical features at the cellular level that we find for compact bone.